So here we are, folks. Tonight's gig is at the 100 Club, which is on Oxford Street. This is Oxford Street. Now, I've been playing shows at this club since I was 15 years old, which is 24 years ago. That is where everyone used to come in the break. So they'd come up and they'd run around there and get a quick drink. So the doors are open, people are coming in. This is like the little bit, you know, you have this time on your own. The brain's thinking about the gig. But if you walk in there for a bit, you're talking to everyone and your brain goes off what the gig's doing. You've got to make sure that everyone's getting in okay. The guest list is sorted, tickets. So many things, so many levels to running a gig. Get on the bus! So today, playing at the 100 Club on Oxford Street. It's a really famous club. Everyone's played there from punk to rock and roll. Loads of jazz musicians, loads of pop, indie. It's an iconic venue. I'm promoting the show. We've sold a stack of tickets. Come and join me. So here we are, folks. Tonight's gig is at the 100 Club which is on Oxford Street. This is Oxford Street. Now, I've been playing shows at this club since I was 15 years old, which is 24 years ago, which is amazing. So all the old jazz stars, Aka Bilt, Kenny Bull, like, and then you have people like Rolling Stones, your Blur played here, Oasis. It's just, it's just an amazing place. And it's down in the basement, as all old clubs should be, you know. You always feel really privileged to come and play. Even Joe Webb's played there. Yeah, played there, done it. See you later, man. When I was 15, coming up here to play, the band I worked with, we were from Devon. You know, nice, sleepy Devon, although we were on tour all the time. And we always used to say, God, we can never live in London. We always got lost, you know. It's a, one thing I'm never, ever going to do is live in London. Five years later, I moved to London and lived here for 14 years. Although, as you've learned, I'm always on tour, so I'd never really see myself as living in London. Here we are, folks, the 100 Club. Funnily enough, it's 100 Oxford Street. So where are we now? What date? That's, what's that? Where are we? October. We're, we're in November now. Adrian Cox Quintet. There you go. Remembering the great sidemen of Louis Armstrong. Yeah. Right. Come with us to the 100 Club. The old ticket. Ticket touting bit. Yeah. Tickets. Yes, I think we're all right. Here you go, folks. It's the 100 Club. Hey! Hey! <laughs> That's a good greeting, isn't it? Oh, in the 100 Club, you can see all of all of the different people who have played it. It's an amazing place. Just incredible. In the early days, it used to be up this end, way before I was born. That's Jeff. He's the main man. He was just saying he's been here for 43 years now. It's so funny. That we were just talking about, you know, the jazz musicians and, and Jeff, who's the owner here now, his father, Roger, was in charge of here for years before, uh, for 40 years, you know, prior to him taking over. And obviously there was a lot of jazz and, you know, it's a labour and love book in jazz a lot of times. He was saying there was a jazz clarinetist called Monty Sunshine, who was massive in the UK, well, all over Europe, actually. Uh, he was meant to be playing here, got a message from management company saying, hey, I've got this little band uh, who I think are going to be quite big. I need the 100 Club on this date. And so I said, oh, who is it? This is a little band called Oasis. And so Jeff said to his dad, I need to put them on at the club on this date. And he said, no, Monty Sunshine has been playing here for years and years and years. His date sticks, you know. But apparently Jeff called Monty up and Monty was all cool with it, you know. Monty, oh, it's all right just to move you one day either side. I said, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, amazing. His dad was like, no. <laughs> but great place. It's brilliant. It's Danny Juniper, the best piano tuner in the whole business. Hello, hello. Isn't hello. that right? It, well, yes, probably. I'd like to say that this is the best sound man in the business. <laughs> <laughs> it's my old mate, Ray. I'm, I'm not even the best sound man How in the business. How long have we known each other? 25 years. Yeah, 20, 21 years. I've known you 21 years. Yeah. Well, it's a day of reunions. If you've never been to the back of the 100 Club, this is the stairs where you load in. Loaded in so many times through here. So I had some strange goings on there as well. It's called Burner's Place in London. You may not know this. If you're looking for a yellow line to park on, there you go. You go through there, turn right. There's a pub called the Blue Post. There's a lot of blue posts in Soho, but they actually mark the, 
they actually mark Soho. There's four of them. Uh, but through there, East Castle Street, blue post on the end. That is where everyone used to come in the breaks. So they'd come up and they'd run around there and get a quick drink. Here is Shaney Forbes. We uh, used to play here 20 years ago. Is that the last time you played it? The last time I played Woo! 20 years, 20 years ago. We don't look any different. I look a bit younger. <laughs> That's all it is. Yeah. So we've done our sound check, we're all ready. Doors are at 7.30, so the time now is seven. So me being the promoter obviously has to get things ready, you know, like backstage, sorting out the tickets, people have bought tickets online. But here we are, we had a great sound check, sounds brilliant. Just got to do the gig now. If you've never come down here, if you're in London, make sure you pop down, come and see it, it's great. This is where I'll be stood this evening. Until then, cheers Ray. Until then, I'll see you in a bit, folks. Calm before the storm, just a little bit of time. Everyone's gone to the pub, I'm sat on my own. So the doors are open, people are coming in. It's like the little bit, you know, you have this time on your own. And it's not like, oh God, I'm a star or anything like that. It's nothing like that. Your brain's thinking about the gig, but if you walk in there for a bit, you're talking to everyone and your brain goes off what the gig's doing. You've got to make sure that everyone's getting in okay. The guest list is sorted, tickets. So many levels to running a gig, especially when you've got to play as well. There's quite a lot that goes on, you know. None of these, these are clarinet reeds. It's what makes the sound in the clarinet. And I have these everywhere. They're always on me. <clears throat> I'm with a company called Van Doren. They were the biggest maker of reeds in the world. I'm a Van Doren artist. So that means that I plug everything about these because they're the best reeds. Never used to have a backstage toilet either. This is Will Sash. He did the animation for Get On The Bus. Get on the bus! Get on the bus! Get on the bus! Get on the bus, Get on the bus boy! Turn out, see if we get the hundred club. I can't show you this. So we finished the gig. The gig was really successful. Uh, loads of people in. You can't really see me because it's quite dark. Maybe if I do this, you can see me. Wee, I'm happy. See you later, bro. See you later, bro. It's amazing having to speak to loads of people, which is great. But when you're running the night, like I said, like running the night, making sure the doorman are there, making sure, you know, the person's doing this, doing that. I don't know why I said the doorman, because I knew they'd be there, but just making sure everyone's all right. and Everyone's on the guest list who needs to be on their tickets. You know, it's so much that goes into it. And then, you know, making sure the band's there, we rehearse the band, get the sound right. And then the actual thing that you've got to do is play the gig. And it's almost, a, it's like the time when you can relax is when you're on stage. I do like talking to people, I love it. But it's amazing when you've got 170 people in the room who all want to come and talk to you and say hello, which is lovely. And I love it and I don't, I don't begrudge it at all. Uh, but it's crazy, like the brain just goes ding, 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 ding. And it won't be till when I get back later that it, when you sit down and go, Oh, you know, gig's not over till, till you get home or back to Joe's. Yes, boy. End of the night. I'm staying with Joe. There he is. So we're just having a debrief. We've had a good day. Good okay. gig. Fantastic day, yeah. And now it's about what's the next gig to promote booking. But over and out. No white t-shirts. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs>